Hello and welcome to this second part of the software engineering overview course and in this lecture I'm going to talk about UML, the first part of it. UML is a unified modeling language and it is a standard of modeling and abstracting systems today. And we are using it to model central parts of uh, ap applications and trying to capture features trying to understand the system as a whole and in part visualize the control of the system's architecture, uh, communicate the desired system uh, structures and behavior to identify uh, cases and abstraction and reuse, and to manage the risks. And basically you can model 80% of most problems just using 20% of UML. Um, modeling, uh, using uh, models to abstract the system is helps us to reduce the complexity, make the system more understandable. And for this, we typically use a combination of text. We use diagrams, uh, structured data. And the choice of models that we use uh, actually has a great effect on how we design the system later on. And uh, of course, this has, we may express it in different level of precision. And there are different models, types of models and we try to use models that are connection to, connected to reality. So, for instance, I could uh, give an example of uh, the Windows desktop, which is based on reality, which we had before. We had desktops, we had files, we had folders, and basically we're trying to get this metaphor so people can understand it. Same with these models, we're trying to uh, abstract the system and, and make it understandable by using uh, models, etc. And typically we need to combine, use the, several different models to capture the entire system and the behavior we want. Uh, there are a lot of different, uh, different UML uh, diagrams and, and models that we can use and I'm going to go through some of them. In this lecture I'm going to go through use case diagrams, activity diagrams and I'm also going to go through storyboards. Uh, and this is part of the artifacts. Um, so in the functional specification, we typically have storyboards, use cases, use case diagrams. And that is part of the requirement specification. And in the system design, we typically have class diagrams, sequence diagrams, state chart, uh, activity diagrams, etc. And that is part of the technical description or system design. First, I'm going to uh, explain what an actor is. So an actor is someone or something that initiates a flow of events in a system. Typically, it's a person because we are mostly interested in illust uh, illustrating uh, how users can interact with the system. In rare cases, it could be an object or it could be a user or a physical environment, etc. In case of an alarm system, perhaps, um, there might be an alarm that triggers a, a set of events uh, that eventually gives the user some form of uh, alert or message. So in this case, it might be interested in having a server or an alarm detector uh, as an actor. Or a GPS satellite might trigger uh, or push a position, which in, in turn triggers some information being pushed to the user. Uh, a use case is typically a, a function provided by the system that users or actors can interact with. And has uh, and a use case description uh, typically has a unique or has a unique name, has participating actors, entry condition, flow of events, exit condition, and some special requirements or exceptions. So basically, use cases is the functional view. Uh, it could be a print method or finding a web page, trying to illustrate how uh, the system can be used. And don't try to capture everything at once because that kind of misses the point. Uh, use cases are meant to abstract the system, make it easy to understand. And if you add too many use cases at once, then suddenly it becomes complex again. And use cases should uh, affect how you test the system in the end because use cases define different features that the system should be able to handle. And when you are testing the system, you verify that these uses, use cases are possible by testing them. Here is a use case diagram, a simple one. So we have a simple watch, which is a package. In that we have three different use cases, so functionalities. Uh, we have two actors, watch user and watch repair users. 
a watch repair person. Um, so the watch repair person can use all three features, uh, including change battery, while the watch user typically only use read time and set time. The use case description, as I call this, um, looks like this. We have the name, change battery, participating actor. Uh, it's a watch repair person. And this, because it's a change battery, we only have the watch repair person here, as illustrated in the previous diagram. Entry condition. Um, well, basically, it has a new battery and exit condition. We have changed the battery. So on the flow events, we open the clock, replace the old battery and with a new battery. So this is a simple example to look at something a little bit more complex. Uh, and here is a case of a ticket machine. So you want to purchase a ticket. We have a actor, which is a passenger. And the passenger is standing in front of a ticket distributor and has sufficient money. And if everything goes well, the passenger will have the ticket in the end. So the flow would be you select the number of zones, the distributor displays the amount due, insert money, uh, return the distributed returns change and then issues the ticket. Now as you can understand there are some special cases here and might, might even result in a case where you don't get the ticket in the end. You can add those as labels here as well like special conditions um, the machine is out of order or has no change. You can have special exit conditions as well. Uh, in the diagrams uh, you have um, extend relationships to uh, express these special conditions. So um, you can extend the purchase ticket with like a timeout or no change, cancel, out of order. And note the direction of the arrows where uh, these no change use case, for instance, they extend the purchase ticket. You also have an include relationship where you reuse certain functionality, in this case, both purchase single ticket and both uh, purchase multi-card uh, use cases. They include the collect money because both are used the same use case. Now to activity diagrams. So activity diagrams illustrate the flow of events. They are fairly similar to state charts if you know those. Uh, a state chart describes the different states and where the system can trans, uh, where to which other states the system can go from a certain state. Uh, activity diagrams instead describe what activities or what actions you can take from a certain ac from a certain place or a certain uh, uh, well basically what actions you can take. So they are similar, um, not exactly the same. And this is more related to the user using the system, uh, but still describes the working system, uh, not the static system, but the dynamic or the built system, so to speak, a running system. Um, so looking at an activity diagram for an incident report system, so we have an incident, it could be fire or the police emergency or something else. So in this case we have a condition um, which is illustrated by that square symbol there, um, which could be if it's not a fire but high priority we notify the police, if it's a fire high priority we notify the fire sheep, chief and if not we just allocate the resources. There's something called splitting, where in which case something can happen at the same time. We use the splitting line, and in this case we split it into three to allocate resources, coordinate the resources, and document the incident at the same time. And we use the splitting line to merge the three uh, lines as well. And we have something called uh, swimming lanes, or swim lanes, where you can allocate certain parts of the responsibilities to different. Um, of your actors, in this case, a uh, field officer might be responsible for documenting the uh, incident while the dispatcher is responsible for everything else. And looking at storyboards, uh, storyboards uh, is a way, it's a simple way to just illustrate um, functionality, and it basically it's a comic strip. It has a benefit of not distracting the user with technology, etc. And I, I've been doing a test in. I did a rapid prototyping session in a nursing home and we started out with pen and paper and tried to illustrate the features and how things would work etc. And we got very good feedback and the moment we brought in a computer, a small computer, uh, where we had implemented the mock-up, the, the 
focus shifted from being on features and, and being productive discussion to being on like will we get an education on this computer or the text is too small etc so it might in some cases it's very good to just use simple tools pen and paper uh, in this case we, we call those case tools like carbon assisted software engineering not to distract and it's very easy to use and you can just throw away a drawing if you don't like it or several people can draw on one pictures so very you know don't underestimate underestimate the simple things here is a simple storyboard so you have a customer who wants to rent a video so you enter the uh, terminal or enter the shop and as you can see all these uh, uh, frames have been numbered so you can refer to them later later in discussion so the user locates a terminal use the terminal and you get an option to select title or actor or genre is in this case select title enter the name of the title of the movie you want to see uh, this is suffice it in uh, frame 8 get a, a ticket or print selection you show this selection to the cashier who fetches the video and you get the video you hand over the rental card um, and, you, and you exit the shop so this is to illustrate the field functionality of a simple just renting the video but it can provide good foundation for a good discussion so to end this lecture I would like to describe how I think uh, it's a good way to start this doing design so basically start with trying to understand what the system should do with a short text description identify the actors who are going to use the system who are the stakeholders uh, try to identify the important use cases uh, you don't need to make use case diagrams or use case description everything or you shouldn't actually make you know try to find the ones that are not trivial the ones that actually need explaining a bit further you should also do uh, prioritize your work later on and attach a cost value risk table and I'll explain that in a later lecture uh, so CVR table as they call and when you design the software you should consider the metrics and, and priorities and so on so you find the right development order so don't try to do everything at once start small and evolve um, make use case diagram of, of things that you think are relevant and skip the rest try to keep it abstract um, try to give a good overview when you need to illustrate functionality you can use activity diagrams when you need to give you something simple and uh, just to describe a uh, flow of events you can use storyboards you can use paper prototypes in which could be either you can draw on paper or you can use a powerpoint to do screenshots and then try to link them together just to you know be able to get feedback early and that's the key here we want to get feedback from the users very early before we actually start implementing anything so that's it for that for this lecture Thank you very much and hope you look at the other lectures as well.